Hello, welcome to a demonstration on how you can uh, eliminate multicollinearity in your multiple regression analysis. Uh, to begin with, it's important to understand what multicollinearity is. It's a very uh, important and famous statistical problem that occurs when two or more independent variables in a regression analysis are highly correlated. And this can actually make it difficult to distinguish uh, the individual impact of each variable on the dependent variable. Uh, a hilarious way of actually looking at it, uh, you know, just to simplify your understanding of what this actually means, it's just similar to having two friends who always do the same thing, so you cannot tell who is responsible for what, right? Sounds a little hilarious here, but at least it does make the point. But of course, in statistical terms, it confuses the model, making it hard to determine which factors truly influence the outcome. Because the whole idea is for us to build a model that can be reliable, that we know is going to be able to predict uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, dependent variable that we wanted to predict with some degree of accuracy. Now that we've understood this, we are going to use Excel, right, for this particular demonstration. So, um, of course, there's actually a method for determining what, uh, which particular independent variable has um, uh, some multicollinearity issues uh, so that you can eliminate it up front. But what you actually want to do here as a practical matter is for us to actually run the model with all the, with all the variables that we have here. So this is a banking data. It's data about a, a bank, and we are trying to predict the balance. Right, using these five uh, independent variables. So age, education, income, va home value, and wealth. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to generate a multiple regression a analysis model, and then we actually examine the data and then figure out if there's any independent variable that is a possibility of any issue. So we'll actually examine all the independent variables. Right, so then, go back and run a correlation report so that we're actually able to see if there's any multicollinearity issue at, at play. Otherwise, we'll just eliminate those uh, independent variables that are not uh, statistically significant uh, in their relationship with the bank balance. Okay, so now how do we do this? Now, let's see if we can get uh, this um, description out of the way. We drag it down here so that we can create some space that we can actually use. So in order for us to generate multiple regression, what we need to do is go to data tab and uh, then you'll be able to see data analysis. If you do not see data analysis here, it means that the add-in has not been activated. It's a very simple process. You just go to file and then you go to uh, options and under options, you should be able to see add-ins and then uh, down here, you'll be able to see uh, manage Excel add-ins. So you just click on go. It opens up a small dialog box here where you will be able to put a checkpoint, a check mark on the analysis tool pack. That's the reason why it was actually showing on my screen. Okay, now that we know that process, we can go ahead and click on data analysis. Okay, so we are looking for regression because that's what we want to generate. So click on regression. Okay, all right, then uh, what is our um, uh, dependent variable? So that's the input Y. We know it's the balance. So we select that, including the column title. Okay, then we go up again here. We click on input X, and uh, this is actually going to be our independent variables. We can select them all at once, so we don't have to select individually. All right, okay, and uh, then now uh, we go back up. And here we indicate that uh, the, first, the first row is actually made up of labels. And um, then here we have to select where we want our results to be. So a, a output range, I want them to appear on the same page, right? I want them to appear on the same page as the data itself. So I can select where I want the output to begin. Somewhere here should be about right. And then I go ahead and say, okay. Once I've done that, I can clean up a little bit, uh, do a right fit to make sure that uh, we can clearly read all 
all the numbers. Now what you notice that with Excel, it, um, it repeats um, for, the, for the final column in the coefficient section, it repeats the lower 95 and the upper 95. It's actually repeated twice. So we can clean that up by deleting that which is actually redundant. So go ahead and do that. And now we got, we've got uh, everything that we need. Right, so, so beyond this, uh, then all I have to do is just to look at uh, regression statistics. So you interpret that multiple R is the strength of the relationships, right, which is all the five independent variables collectively, their relationship with the bank balance, uh, it's at 97%. That's pretty strong. And then the R square is how much of the variation in the bank balance is being explained by these five independent variables. It's actually at 95%. But we prefer to use uh, the the adjusted R square because it accounts for the sample size. So it kind of adjusts the R square uh, to take into consideration that the sample size could actually be a limitation for our estimation, which is actually a good idea. Now beyond that, everything else self-explanatory, standard error of the mean, uh, you know, the deviation, the data dispersion, right? So it's basically telling us that number. Uh, not not very useful for our purpose uh, as of now. Observations are just a sample size. And then here, under the analysis of variance, all this other stuff here is actually designed just to show you uh, the, 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 the workings that actually went behind for us to be able to calculate all these numbers that you see under regression statistics. But otherwise, we are interested in the significance F here, which is the equivalent of our p-value. It's actually telling us that um, the, uh, the relationship, right, uh, the correlation between the five independent variables and the bank balance is statistically significant. It's actually up to 59 decimal places. As you can see there, we've got an E minus 59. So this number is actually 59 decimal places. But good, so far so good. But now what is so significant here is for us to look at the p-values for each independent variable with the bank balance. Now we're actually able to see here that the age is statistically significant to six decimal places. Education is not statistically significant because it's not lower than 0 0.05, right? So it's actually higher, even though slightly, but it's higher than 0 0.05. So education is, is not statistically significant. Uh, income is statistically significant. Uh, home value is not, and uh, wealth uh, is statistically significant to nine decimal places. All right, so 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 now here we, we can see that not all independent variables are statistically significant in their correlation with the bank balance. So now this is the time for us to see if we can if we can do some further analysis of the independent variables uh, themselves so that we can see if there's any multicollinearity going on here. All right, so in order for us to do that, um, I'll probably have to open another fresh file where I can generate, I can generate some correlation statistics uh, so that we can actually examine those, right? So what we do again, we go to data, and uh, data analysis. And uh, then of course we go to, instead of regression, we want correlation. So we should be able to find correlation function. Now the good thing about correlation is that it's also available in SPSS. So I'll be able to, you'll be able to see one of my videos where I actually do the same demonstration using SPSS as well. So it's correlation, uh, okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick only the independent variables, right? Because they're the ones that are actually of concern to me. I want to make sure that I can determine if there are uh, some independent variables that are explaining the same thing, right? Uh, my two friends who are who do exactly the same thing, so when something goes wrong, I can hardly tell who did what, right? Okay, just going back to that example, uh, that we used earlier to simplify our understanding. So labels in first row, yes, all right? So that is actually consistent. And uh, then of course, output, I also want to generate the output and place it here on the same page so that I can, if I wanted to have some visual inspection of the data, I'm actually able to do that. 
So I can click on that here. This is where I want my output to begin. And I can go ahead and say, okay. Oh, there we go. All right, so here is my correlation report. Uh, let me just do a right fit here so that I can clearly read all the information. So here we, we are now able to see uh, education and age. There, that is that is that's a small number. Well, if if it's uh, higher than 0.7, then it becomes a concern. So this is a small number. Income and age is small number, and education is a small number. Home value with age is a small number. It's high with education and it's high with income, right? Then what about wealth? Wealth is a um, small number with age, small number with education, but it's a high number with income. And um, or home value, it's a small number. So our problem here is actually the home value, right? It is a multicollinearity uh, effect because the, it has uh, more than one other independent variable that it's actually explaining the same thing with. All right, so we can safely say this is our, for lack of a better term, our culprit. <laughs> All right. So now let's see if we can rerun our regression model uh, while excluding while excluding home value. Right. So now, okay, we have to figure out how we're actually going to do this, right? Uh, let me see here. Okay. Can we do it here? Right. So that's actually one way of actually looking at it. We could as well um, do it here or we can actually open another file. Right. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, let's see if we can actually do it from here. We can actually go ahead and uh, and delete this stuff here. Okay, let's. And then we go to data analysis. And uh, we now go to regression. Oh, uh, well, before we do that, we know that. Okay, we have to cancel this and we want to delete the home value, right? That's the one that we said. It's, uh, it is a multi collinearity uh, relationship. Okay, so now that we've done that, we should be able to go to. Uh, data analysis and we want uh, regression. Well, this is exciting stuff. I'm sure you are picking up that. Um, okay, so now here, the input Y, we can leave it as it is. Let me see. F, no, we have to, we have to replace it. We have to reselect again. So select our dependent variable. Right, then we scroll back up, and then we also want to get rid of this so that we can select um, from age to wealth all the independent variables. Right, they're all selected. Right, there we scroll back up, and now everything else looks about right. Okay, age to or maybe we want to make sure that our output will begin somewhere here. We can do that here. And uh, it looks like everything else is well selected. So we can go ahead and say, okay, beautiful. So now we've actually regenerated our regression statistics. So now it's time for us to see if it made any difference. Again, cleaning up the last two, day, last two columns, we don't need them. Okay, now we, we can see that, uh, okay, our multiple R is still about the same, and uh, the R square is about the same, 95%, adjusted R is 94%, so it's still about the same, right? And of course, our sample size is still the same. We are still statistically significant here, collectively, for the four independent variables. Then we get to the exciting part, the p-values down here. We can now see that age is statistically significant, so is education, and so is income, right? Income, it's actually five decimal places, and wealth, nine decimal places. Age, it's up to seven decimal places. And uh, of course, we can see education is 0.004, which is smaller than 0.05. So all of a sudden, we can actually see that uh, education was actually being impacted on by the 
by the home value, right? So it's the home value that was actually impacting um, uh, our multiple regression because of multicollinearity. Now, all of a sudden, you can find that uh, we can we can comfortably say uh, these four independent variables are much more reliable, right? They are much more reliable predictors of the bank balance, right? So there you have it. Uh, you can actually see that the power of uh, recognizing multicollinearity and how to go about uh, eliminating it so that you can clean up your model so that you can have a much more reliable model. You can, of course, we are not saying you get rid of uh, those friends. <laughs> Maybe we you separate them, right? There are two friends, right? Who would do exactly the same thing. You separate them whenever you're doing a certain activity so that at least you can track back the problem to one friend who will actually be left. Well, I'm hoping that uh, you will be able to work on multiple regression analysis in the future um, with a lot of excitement, as you can hear from me. This is exciting stuff, right? Imagine if we didn't know how to use statistics to predict things. It's more like we're actually walking in the darkness, right? It doesn't mean that uh, we cannot get certain things right, right? By trial and error, we can still get things right. But uh, isn't it nice to at least be able to quantitatively figure things out so that at least you can be sure, uh, you know, at 95% confident level that it's actually making sense. All right. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and of course if you like the video like it share the video and please please subscribe to the channel so that i can continue to bring some useful resources that can make a huge difference in your life thank you so much and bye for now